Yeah. Oh yeah, I had to bring it out. I had to bring it out. You already know, I had to bring it out. I had to go old school. Listen, my Los Angeles Lakers is back in the finals. We're back in the finals after 10 years, after the, 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 the fantastic, awesome Kobe Bryant got us there 10 years ago. A man named LeBron James signed with us just two seasons ago. He's in year number two with the Lakers, and in year number two, he got us back to the finals where we obviously used to be in that. Now, before I get started with this video, I want to go ahead and tell you guys to subscribe to my channel. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that like button and, that, and leave me some comments. Uh, you know, and hit that bell also, so that way when I drop another video, you guys are notified immediately. Uh, I want to get into who LeBron James really is. I want to, I want to get into why he will finish his career as the greatest of all time. Now, let me get right into it. First of all, let's just get right to it. Tonight, in a closeout game. He became the fourth player in NBA history to record a triple-double with 30 points or more. Fourth person to do this in history. Okay, 38 points. Uh, I, 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 excuse me. He, he's, he became the second person in NBA history. Magic Johnson being the only other person to get... A 38-point triple-double in a closeout game. He finished tonight with 38, 16 rebounds, and 12 assists. I, I mean, this guy never seems to amaze me. At the age of 35, he'll be 36 in a few months, and he's performing like that? It's unbelievable. Not only that. He also became the fourth player in NBA history to be playing in his 10th finals. Are you kidding me? In 17 years, this guy is playing in his 10th final? I don't know what else to say. I mean, like, the hate that people have for LeBron James, it, it, it astounds me. It astounds me. Like, first of all, like, anybody who has a, a brain, anybody that has a set of eyes, anybody that follows basketball, whether you are a fan of his or not, you can clearly see that the things that he do are unlike anything the past players have been able to accomplish. Now, Kobe Bryant, arguably the best Laker to ever put on the purple and gold. We know, it, we know what Kobe accomplished. He had a great, long 20-year career. He delivered five championships, an MVP, three finals MVP, uh, two uh, finals MVPs. Um, he was just fantastic. Magic Johnson, my favorite player of all time, five championships, eight appearances. Three MVPs. What else can you say? The Great Magic, Kareem, Worthy, all those guys. That whole Showtime, and then the the the, the revised Lake Show. The Kobe and Shaq teams. But then you enter into 2020, the year of the pandemic. Arguably, the worst year that anybody can remember in the past 20, 30, 40 years. And in this, in 2020, this man, LeBron James, delivered on his promise and got the Lakers back into the NBA Finals. I, I can't tell you how, how ecstatic I am that the Los Angeles Lakers are back into the NBA Finals. But most importantly, I'm so happy for LeBron James, what he's been able to accomplish is, is beyond comprehension. I mean, 
you're talking about delivering. Everybody, all these critics who got, who who always talk about, oh well, he don't deliver. He don't hit the shots that matter. He don't know how to. He don't. He don't have a, the 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 Mamba mentality. Well, guess what? Tonight, he had the Mamba mentality. Kobe lived in him tonight. LeBron hit every important basket down the stretch. He put the Lakers on his shoulders and told that team that I was not going to let y'all lose. I'm not about to let y'all lose. We ain't losing. We're going to close these guys out. And that's exactly what he did. 38 points. And not to, not to mention, he struggled in free throws, but tonight he was 7 for 8. I mean, what a fantastic finish in a closeout game. Now, I'm sick and tired of the comparisons. I'm sick and tired of everybody, you know, but this Michael Jordan is better than the LeBron debate stuff, man. Listen, we all know how great Michael Jordan was. Michael Jordan was phenomenal. I mean, anybody that played basketball, that plays basketball, that watched basketball was inspired by Michael Jordan even if they weren't a fan. The stuff that he did was just things that we had never seen before. But now that Michael Jordan's cement has finally dried and it's been, you know, obviously uh, 20 plus years that he's been retired. And in those 20 plus years, a guy named LeBron James came along straight out of high school, went straight to the NBA had cameras on him, had all this pressure on him because he was labeled the chosen one. And then what does he do? He delivered. He delivered. He took a championship. He took a, he took a, you know, a not so talented Cleveland Cavalier team in 2007 to the finals. And yeah, they, they lost, you know, uh, in the finals, uh, obviously, to the San Antonio Spurs. I believe they were Schwepp. But to get them to the finals with that roster, I, I, I just thought it was just phenomenal. And But, you know, you're going to always have the haters out there hating on this guy. But all this guy does is win, and all this guy does is get to the end of the seasons. Prior to this, eight straight finals. Eight straight finals. In the last 10 years, this guy is playing in his ninth final. Nine out of 10 years. With last year's injury keeping him out of the playoffs. And who knows if he don't be injured, he might have went to the finals last year. How could you hate on him? And again, back to the Michael Jordan thing. Yeah, Michael Jordan was great. But Michael Jordan didn't play against KD. Michael Jordan ain't never faced a seven-footer with handles that can shoot from the three-point line, that can take you off the dribble. He ain't never faced a guy like Giannis. No, Michael Jordan didn't face those. Patrick Ewing didn't have no, no handles. Patrick Ewing was just a big seven-foot-one center that was a standard center, and he done what did what a center did. Manu Bowl. George Murison, all these big men back then, Vin Baker, all these guys, Vlade Divac, these guys were not centers like you see. They weren't the standard seven-footers you see today. Michael Jordan never faced Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, the two best to ever play the, in the backcourt together. He ain't never faced a, t uh, a, a shooting backcourt like that. He never faced a team that won 73 games, fall behind three games of one, come back and beat them. Rewriting history. He never had to face those type of teams. The, the players, the athletes today are a completely different freak of nature. Michael Jordan being the freak of nature of all those athletes back then. Then you had guys like Sean Kemp come along. You know, a few other guys come along. Kobe Bryant came, you know, towards the tail end of Michael Jordan's career. 
with the same type of athleticism. But we had seen we hadn't seen anything like Vince Carter who could jump over people while he was standing straight up and he was seven feet. We had never seen guards like Allen Iverson. The closest we saw to that was Tim Hardaway and maybe Isaiah Thomas, but Allen Iverson took it to a whole nother level. And Michael Jordan got a taste of that trying to guard him one time. Michael Jordan didn't face those type of players that we have today in the NBA. And everybody talk about, oh, well, you know, the East was was back then. Uh, LeBron wouldn't be able to play in the West or, or wouldn't be able to play with those guys because, you know, because they would have you know knocked him down. First of all, dude, who the hell would want to play where somebody's trying to headhunt you, trying to clothesline you and knock you down and hurt you and injure you? That's why when you see these old players that played back then, the Isaiah Thomases, the Larry Birds, whose back went out, you know, uh, guys like James Worthy, you know, all these guys, Michael Jordan, these guys all are, you know, feeling the effects of all of those, those hard fouls and all that crazy jungle ball. So don't be mad at, and hate on LeBron James because he didn't play in an era where they, they wanted to try to kill you. That's not what sports is about. That's not what basketball is about. Why the hell would I want to play in a, a basketball game where somebody just don't like me and they want to see me, they want to beat me so bad that they're going to clothesline me while I'm in the air trying to end my career? So I don't want to hear those dumb excuses and all these, 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 these dumb things about how he didn't play in an era where they, where they knocked you down and, and they, they elbowed you. And Come on, dude. That's not basketball. That's football. That's hockey. Now, LeBron plays today, and he's playing against guys like Jamal Murray, who's next in terms of the next stars of the league. He's playing against these guys, and he's 35 years old. And he's, and he's, and he's giving them the business. Like I said, Michael Jordan didn't have to face those type of teams. He didn't have to, he didn't have the adversity that, that LeBron had. Taking teams, putting them on his back. Everybody want to talk about, oh, well, he had Kyrie Irving. Well, guess what? Kyrie Irving was on the Cleveland Cavaliers team two seasons before LeBron came back. And guess what? They weren't winning, they were winning less than 20 games. It wasn't until LeBron came back home that the Cleveland Cavaliers was able to get to the finals again. Okay, so if, if it was all about Kyrie, then why couldn't Kyrie get him to the playoffs? At least when Michael Jordan left, at least Scottie Pippen was able to get them to the to the Eastern Conference Finals and came up a couple of, a couple of points short from reaching the finals. Kyrie Irving never made no playoff. His playoff, he didn't make the playoffs until LeBron came back to Cleveland. Okay, and Kevin Love, yeah, he was great. He was good, but. There was a lot of games when he wasn't, and he was hurt a lot. Y'all act like, you know, like he, like he came back to stacked up teams in, in Cleveland. He didn't do that. The only time that you, you want to call it a stacked team is when he left and went to Miami. And, 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 and mind you, Kevin Garnett and him did it first. The Celtics did it first. So... LeBron bounced and went to Miami and, 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 and brought in Bosch and, and joined uh, Dwayne Wade. Even things out. Now everybody's doing it. And I'm sick of all of this. Well, you know, he only got to the finals because the East is weak. Well, he's in the West now. He's in the, the wild, wild West. And guess what? Tonight, we won the West. And guess who's on our team? A guy named LeBron James. So what's the excuse now? Here he is with his third team. Third team that he got to the championship. Now, everybody's going to sit there and say, well, Michael Jordan had six, and he won six straight. Okay. Okay. But did he do it with three different teams? No. 
when Michael Jordan decided to retire and try to come back at the age of 38, he was washed up. Went to the Washington Wizards, couldn't do nothing. I mean, it was really sad to see him even trying to play. Matter of fact, my boy Gilbert Arenas lit him up for 41 when he was a rookie with the Golden State Warriors that year. So, but everybody's going to have those excuses. And not to mention, Michael Jordan didn't win the first six, seven years of his career. From 85 to 1990, Michael Jordan didn't win nothing. He could get past the old-ass Celtics, the old-ass Pistons. It wasn't until Scottie Pippen, you know, came around. They added some great players. You know, they changed up the coaching. Put Phil Jackson in there. They start running that triangle offense, and then they were able to do some things. And, you know, again, I give all the credit to, 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 to Mike. Mike did his thing, but that was a hell of a coaching staff. Michael, you know, Michael Jordan had. Phil Jackson, you know, the great Tex winner. Jim Clemens. You know, all these guys are brilliant minds. These guys run a complex offense called the Triangle. It's a read and, rack, read and react uh, offense where everything is based off of, uh, you know, a counter. Very complicated uh, offense to run. And then, getting back to, 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 the, to the LeBron and Michael Jordan debate, the things that the LeBron do defensively. In year 17, they put LeBron on the hottest guy in the, in the bubble. Shut him down. Game four, shut him down. In the last five minutes. Tonight, shut him down. And this is a 35-year-old man. Going up against a 22-year-old. And, 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 and giving him the business. I don't want to hear nothing else about people hating on LeBron. I don't want to hear nothing else about LeBron's not the GOAT. He's not the GOAT yet. But when that man cement finally dry and he hang it up for good, he's going down. Whether you like it or not. He's going down in history as the best to ever do it because he's going to do something that no other player has ever done and no other player will ever do. And that is win three championships with three different teams and lead those teams and get the finals MVP because he's getting that finals MVP. Michael Jordan never done that. Michael Jordan was a great scorer, but he never done that. Again, like I said, this man in the closeout game gave him 38, 16, and 12, okay? Not, not only that, let, let's, talk about, let's talk about what, what Michael Jordan has done. I mean, what, what LeBron James has done in his career. He got four MVPs. He's got three championships, working on the fourth one. He's uh, first in scoring in playoff history. He's third in scoring all time NBA history. He's uh, he's the only player in NBA history to post at least two thousand points and five hundred rebounds and five hundred assists in a single season for at least eight seasons. I mean, how remarkable is that? He's the only player in NBA history to average at least 25 points a game for 15 consecutive seasons. The only one. He's the only player in NBA history to be in the top five. Okay? Top five all-time in points. Top ten all-time in assist. <laughs> Only player in NBA history to have at least 9,000 rebounds and 9,000 assists. But everybody want to hate on this man. How is he not the best? Numbers don't lie. One of two players in NBA history to win at least two 
NBA Most Valuable Player Awards for two different franchises. And he should have been MVP this year. He should not have been Giannis. But that's a whole other story. He's, 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 he's one of two players in NBA history to win at least. Uh, to, you know, we talked about that. He's one of two players in NBA history to record a triple-double against all NBA teams. Okay? He did it first. It's, 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 it's just remarkable to me how people like to hate on this man and not get his man his props. And then they always want to sit up there and throw these Michael Jordan comparisons. I mean, like I said, him and Michael Jordan are two different type of players anyway when it ball balls down to it. They're two different types of players. They don't even play the same style of basketball. Michael Jordan is 6'6", LeBron is 6'9". They're two different players. You know? He's third, like I said, he's third in all-time scoring. He's, uh, his points per game is fourth in NBA history, 27.7, okay? Field goal attempts, he's ninth. He's ninth, okay? He, he, he's, he's, he's also ninth in assist in, in all time in the history of the NBA. He's 13th in steals when it's all said and done. He'll be in the top 10. I mean, I could go on and go on and go on and go on. But I just want you guys to understand that what LeBron James is doing, we've never seen it before. You tell me who's done it. And don't tell me Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan did not do it. And everybody want to sit up here talking about, well, Michael, Michael won six straight. Well, so did Scottie Pippen. And if it wasn't for Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan don't get them six rings. That's the whole thing. Nobody gives Scottie Pippen no credit. Who you think was, was, was giving Magic Johnson the business in 91? It wasn't Michael Jordan. It was Scottie Pippen guarding a young Scottie Pippen, bodying up Magic Johnson, not allowing him to, to dribble that ball freely, pressured him from one half to the other half, wore Magic down. Nobody gives Scottie Pippen that credit. Spotty Scotty's Pippen was the one taking it to the to the New York Knicks. He don't get credit. All the credit goes to Michael Jordan. Yeah, we know Michael Jordan is great, but Michael Jordan had a, a great player with him that was just as good as he was. <laughs> while while y'all, you know, throwing all these comparisons out there, Scotty Pippen was just as good as Michael Jordan. I'm not saying he was better than Michael Jordan, but he was just as good. He could put up some of the same numbers, and he could do some of the same things that Michael Jordan was doing. And there were times where Scottie Pippen carried those those uh, that Bulls team. I remember in the 92 finals when they were playing the Portland Trailblazers. I believe it was a closeout game, game six, I believe, or game five or game six, and Michael Jordan was having the worst game ever. Field, they fell behind by 20 points. Phil Jackson took him out the game. Scotty carried that group. They got within striking distance. They put Michael Jordan back in with like three or three and a half minutes left. And he was able to, you know, to, to find a rhythm and, and, and close the deal. But Scotty Pippen and, and, a, and, a, and some of the, uh, the other players, role players, bench players, were the ones that, that got that team, like Paxton and, and, and guys like that. They were able to get, that, get that, that team, you know, in a position to win that game in that closeout situation. Michael Jordan wasn't always the one. Yes, he was the one that stood out the most because he was Michael Jordan. And obviously, he's, he, he, he's a great player. But, I mean, you guys, you know, and then y'all talk about how Kyrie Irving bailed out LeBron. Ray Allen bailed out LeBron. AD just recently bailed out LeBron. But how many times was Michael Jordan bailed out? Steve Kerr bailed him out. John Paxton bailed him out. Scotty Pippen bailed him out. Luke Longley bailed him out. 
those Bull teams were great. Everybody talk about, well, he, he, you know, Michael Jordan did it with nobody. Man, he had Brian Williams on that team before. He had Dennis Rodman on that team before. Ron Harper on that team. They had great players. Luke Longley, Steve Kerr, great shooters, Judd Bushler. They had a lot of these players that y'all might not know their names, but they were some of the best bench role players from the bench that we've seen. Phil Jackson was a master at putting together the perfect teams. But everybody thinks that, you know, because they don't know those names that he didn't play with anybody. Yes, he did. Steve Kerr is one of the top of all time three-point shooters there was in the history of the game. So stop hating on LeBron, man, and stop making it seem like LeBron, you know, had all his help. I mean, everybody has help. It's a team. There's like, it's no one on five out there. Everybody gets help. Everybody gets help. But to sit there and try to, you know, have all this negative stuff and try to take away from LeBron's greatness is just absolutely nuts to me. You know, it's nuts to me. LeBron James will be the greatest basketball player that we've ever seen. And I'm telling you, when he win this, when he win this championship with the Lakers and he get this finals MVP, it's going to be something that no one's ever did and something that we'll, we'll probably never see again in our lifetime. Because it's real special to do something like that. The Clippers won't, I don't, in my opinion, the Clippers won't have a chance to do it no more. Because the Warriors is coming back. Giannis might be going over there to Golden State. The Lakers will get better because they're going to be even more appealing now and attractive to other people that will want to go there and play, you know, with, with guys like AD and LeBron. We'll be in the mix again, but I think the Clippers, is, that their one chance was this season, I believe, and I believe it's a wrap. And Denver ain't going nowhere. <laughs> They're going to be even better. Utah, it's going to be real tough next year. But this year, this year's championship will be tougher than any championship in any era because of the circumstances. We've never had a championship run or our season go through a pandemic like this where you're in a bubble, isolated from everybody, including your family. That takes a, a, a toll on you psychologically. You know how focused you got to be psychologically to be able to go out there and perform under those circumstances? This is adversity at its best. And to me, this is the most serious I've ever seen LeBron. And if LeBron wins this championship, this will be the greatest championship run, the greatest championship win that we've ever witnessed. And that's whoever wins it. But if LeBron does it, it's going to put him in a league of his own. And I think it's going to be better than the six championships that Michael Jordan had, in my opinion. And like I said, the man ain't even th done yet. He's still got three, four years left in the NBA, and we don't know what he's going to do in those next three or four years. But mark my words, LeBron James will go down as the best basketball player in the history of the game. And you might not like it. Oh well, get over it. Late show. I'll get back at y'all in the next one. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell and leave me a comment.